Hey everyone, this is Spencer, and welcome back to Sleep Stories. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Writing Prompt Bob Ross was actually a serial killer that painted where he buried his victims. His paintings are becoming suspicious and the body count is rising. Story by Cantor Set The latest episode was starting. Mark sat at the television, watching, waiting. Bob came on screen, like he always did. The smile he gave the world once seemed carefree and kindly to him, but Mark could now only see the inner smugness in his teeth, the way his eyes shifted around in their sockets, the glee of somebody getting away with murder. It had occurred to Mark that he may have gone mad, but therapy could wait. He was onto something. He knew it. Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Joy of Painting. Now today, we're going to try something a little different, but don't worry. Mark sneered to himself at the line eyes darting over to the walls of his home. They were covered in photographs, pictures from the show, some from behind the scenes. Police reports were stacked on his desk, missing person reports to be exact. Hundreds of interviews from terrified parents and concerned spouses, looking for their family and friends, desperately hoping for any update, unaware that they would never see them again, because of him. Bob was applying the first few strokes to the canvas, but Mark was lost in thought lost in his hatred for the smug murderer on screen. The nice guy persona didn't face him a bit nowadays. He had initially made the connection by accident. A photograph of the crime scene was featured in the daily paper, and Mark had the feeling he had seen it before. And just like that, a side-by-side -side comparison made it obvious. Bob had painted the scene of the crime down to the individual trees, and he'd painted it on television, on television, in front of hundreds of thousands of viewers. He turned his attention back to the screen. Bob was working on the foreground, carefully applying a shade of dark green. Any beauty the image might have once held was gone. Instead, a single question remained. Who was buried there? Mark didn't realize until the episode was almost done. Bob was meticulously placing the branches on a single tree in the background, a strange tree that was split down the middle. With a start, Mark got to his feet and ran to the window, looking out at his backyard and in his backyard was a single tree split down the middle. Mob's voice spoke from the television in the living room. Well, that's it for this episode. I made this painting for a dear friend that I haven't seen in a while. It's going to be so great to give it to him in person. Story by KBB223 Bob ran the brush through a thick glob of oil paint and wiped the excess on his pants. It was a nightmare, eerily quiet. Bob gently tapped the brush against the canvas, filling in a line of pine trees with a dusting of snow. Outside, the wind howled and beat against the sides of the cabin. Snow had piled so high in only a matter of hours, Bob had to clear the chimney of ice for the fire thrice. The fire that, at the moment, was the only thing keeping him alive. Well, that, and the unfinished business. Business that must be finished. But first, the painting. Bob smiled to himself and stood back admiring the intricacy of the painted landscape. Reminiscent of Aspen, the forest scene pulled at his emotions. Well, it should. This was to be a successful night. He began to float off into daydreams, knowing that time was on his side. He didn't need to rush, as he sometimes did. Bob began to imagine the faces of those he'd explored. A young girl from Florida, brown hair, green eyes. Her screams reminded him of birds cawing. A teenage boy from California, Football player, bit back, but eventually gave up. A mother from Washington, blonde with a soccer mom complex, tennis shoes, perfume. He let the feeling of euphoria consume him for a moment, ignoring any doubts. Sirens broke this happy days, loud and coming towards the cabin. Bob dashed to the window, and sure enough, the blues and reds of two law enforcement vehicles echoed against the trees. He froze, calculating in his head. It had to be now. Bob scrambled around the room, gathering several things in a pack. He threw on a thick barca, boots and gloves. Tossing the pack over his back, he returned to the painting. Bob slipped a marker from his pocket, bending down to the right-hand corner of the canvas. He sighed. Ross, thanks again. He glanced at the cellar door, feeling an odd sense of longing. It was only a moment. He had made a choice now. The last one would be a sacrifice. She would live. Giving the cabin one last look, Bob slipped out the back door and into the snow. The lights were brighter now, and heavy footsteps could be heard not far off. 
Bob smiled and started towards a hidden path into the trees. He would begin again, but now there was only waiting. Story by Tradamus. Welcome to the joy of painting. Even coming out of his own mouth, the words felt buried beneath a hundred leagues of dark, murky ocean. He paused for a moment, looking beyond the camera at the bright studio lights, imagining they were cooking him like fat in a frying pan. He felt a bead of sweat drop down his back. The wine of fluorescence suddenly filled his perception. Wouldn't the mics pick up on that? Like every angry bee in the world was watching from beyond those lights. Bob turned to the easel, letting the weight of his palette reassure him, to focus him, to center him. As always, his concern was for the detail. The painting had to be perfect, otherwise there was no point. No point to this at all. Beginning the process, his body reacted, his heart thudding in his chest, his vision dampening into what he imagines others might call tunnel vision, though he wouldn't know, as he wasn't what you would call a people person. Careful now, not to let that gargantuan thudding in his breast move the brush away. Trees came to his mind and fled out of his brush, resolving into a sordid display onto the canvas. He paused imperceptibly to remind himself to talk about the techniques he pretended to use. He was already speaking, autopilot, he supposed. Autopilots fascinated him. If people did not need to fly planes, where else were people not necessary? The thought seemed to empty the studio. Was he alone? Faster now. The gentle flip of his brush became harsher, like the sound of a knife against a whetstone. Flip, flip, thud, thud. He could not stand his brush from painting a small white figure at the top of the mountain. He knew it was wrong to paint details such as that. These had to look like pleasant landscapes. Anything more in his work, his very important work, might be ruined. Before he knew it, time had passed and his painting was completed. A macabre display of trees, mountains, and lakes, grisly except for the details, wretched in the knowledge that had produced it. The lights dim, the buzzing subsided. He stowed his pallet off to the side, picked up the painting, and strode with purpose to the exit, stage left. A woman was waiting. A woman was always waiting. It may have been the same woman. Ross did not have an eye for the detail. Not outside of the studio. We think this one is outside of Butte. We already have agents en route. Ross said nothing. The woman took the painting. I saw you trying to cover it up. The Lady of the Rockies you drew in at the top. You don't need to. No one suspects anything. Least of all the killer. But so long as you're not painting billboards, it should be fine. And then she strode away with painting. The proof of another murder that no one else would ever see again or ever think existed. And perhaps one more killer would be behind bars this evening. A killer that wasn't Bob Ross. Because Bob Ross isn't a killer. The thought that someone might think that of him appalled him. Story by Regime. Anything we don't like will turn into a happy little tree. Do you know why? I aim my pistol at Bob Ross, my hand shivering. He paints a little tree in the corner of the canvas, oblivious to the gun in his face. Put your hands behind your head, now. He ignores me and continues. Because we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents. My earpieces cackles to life. Agent, agent, do you copy? Yes, I reply. The suspect is with me now. Send reinforcements to the fourth floor. No, Agent. The investigation results have come back. You must return immediately. Abort mission. Now. What? Why? I shout into the headpiece. The murders. They only take place when Bob Ross is in the studio recording his show. Bob Ross finishes his painting. He turns around and smiles at me. In his painting, I see a river lined with trees flowing into the distance. Beside the river stands a stout four-story building. How? How do you kill someone when you're seated here the whole time? Do you have accomplices working for you? I ask, my voice quivering. He shakes his head. You still don't get it, do you? He sighs. With one smooth movement, he whips out a dagger and stabs his painting. I pull the trigger of my pistol, but a throbbing, burning pain strikes my chest and my shot misses Bob Ross and hit the ceiling instead. I tumble to the ground and curl up into a ball. My insides feel like they are on fire. He walks towards me. My friend, you must learn to let it go, like a happy little tree. He takes out a small sketchbook and begins painting a tree. Tree branches grow out from every orifice of my body. I try to scream, but it's too late. Thanks for checking out this episode of Sleep Stories. If you guys want to see more content like this in the future and want to help further support the channel, 
then feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, we'll catch you in the next one. But until then, sleep tight.